Hi guys, it's Omer from MOs.com. I'm doing another quick week weekly news recap for all major MO news and announcements for the week ending February 22nd, 2016. This is episode number 31 of the recap, and the first bit of news this week is a quick recap of Black Desert Online, which actually finished its second round of closed beta testing earlier today, and is set to launch officially on March 3rd. We did a Sunday Funday video for the game already, and we'll discuss some uh, potential pitfalls and good slash bad things about the game in tomorrow's podcast. Remember, it's a buy to play game, meaning it's a one time purchase of 30 bucks. And given the excitement for the game already during its closed beta, it has the potential to become something really big here in the West. We'll find out more after it actually launches. Uh, next up, Asta Online from Webzen is launching its open beta on March 2nd. I guess they wanted to 1-up Black Desert Online by launching their game one day before. This is four months after its initial beta test in November, and Webzen is working with the game's developer Polygon Games to better localize the game for Western audiences by improving translations and ad adding voiceovers to the game. And plus, they've also been quote-unquote implementing community suggestions, which actually sounds great. Asta is a bit of an oddball because it originally launched in South Korea back in 2013 and is now just making its way to the West. Another reason it's an oddball is the Korean version of the game actually shut down earlier in 2015, which doesn't bode well for the Western release, but there's still hope that it might be a bigger hit in the West than it was in the East. And I do expect the first look for that game right when it launches on March 2nd. Uh, next up, some exciting news from RuneScape. Jagex is close to launching their NXT or Next client for the game after conducting another round of closed beta testing last weekend. The NXT client offers uh, yet another makeover for the game's visuals, namely improving lighting, water, and most importantly, performance. The client will be available for both PC and Ubuntu Linux, and it'll be running much, much smoother, which is always awesome. Uh, Jagex has really done an outstanding job keeping RuneScape modern. If you look at some other older games like Ultima Online, which just really haven't aged that well, RuneScape is still on the ball with that. Anyway, and speaking of more modern, our next bit of news is actually also RuneScape related and a bit modern as well. Uh, Jagex also announced another spin-off RuneScape game, this time called RuneScape Idle Adventures, an idle RPG game similar to titles like Cookie Clicker, Adventure Capitalist, and Clicker Heroes. So yes, if you're a fan of those idle games, Jagex will be making their very own game and jumping on the bandwagon with their own iteration. Uh, there's no videos out for the game yet or actual screenshots, so all we have to work with is some concept art, so I can't show you much. The game will be available for free on PC, Android, and iOS. And these idle games aren't that bad because I've left Cookie Clicker on and Adventure Capitalist on longer than I'd care to admit in my background. In fact, I have over 70 hours played on Adventure Capitalist according to my Steam list, which is uh, it's quite a bit. I move right along, we have one more piece of Jagex news slash RuneScape news to cover. Chronicle of RuneScape Legends is entering open beta on March 23rd. The game's closed beta ran for 10 weeks and saw over 700,000 games played, with over 7.5 million minutes clocked in by all players. Our Chronicle of RuneScape Legends is Jagex's entry into the competitive online CCG realm, which Hearthstone sort of brought into the mainstream, and at least recently. Uh, despite a lot of similarities in visuals and card-like looks, the two games do seem distinctly different. However, I haven't played Chronicle yet, but I am excited to give it a shot, especially since I have a lot of time clocked in on Hearthstone, so, and, it, and it does look kind of different, so I'm excited for it. Uh, next up guys, we got some news for Sky Saga, which is launching Alpha 7 on February 25th. Holy crap, this game is on Alpha 7 already, and they're not yet launched. But anyway, the Alpha 7 is supposed to launch on February 25th, and it's supposed to be the game's biggest update yet. They've been adding new pickaxes, and they've been listening closely to player feedback to add some more much, add some more features. I did a video for this game ages ago, it just feels like they're going so slow with release though, I mean, it, it just Alpha 7 already, holy crap. Go to some kind of closed beta, open beta, and start fixing these problems as you hear from more players. But it just seems like they're taking their time. It's obviously a RuneScape, not RuneScape, a Minecraft inspired game, so it's trying to ride that train. But I feel like by the time this game launches, that hype might already be dead. If you haven't played Sky Saga yet and want to, you can sign for the Alpha on the official website. It's not hard to get into the Alpha either. Either pretty much anyone that signs up will get in, so that's really not a problem. And uh, here's hoping they actually launch the full game somewhat soon. Up next, a bit of news from Star Wars The Old Republic. Knights of the Fallen Empire Chapter 11 Disavowed launched on March 10th. As we discussed, I believe, in the last podcast, Star Wars is really doing quite well. Their subscriber numbers are at, at nearly three-year highs, which is pretty solid. And you do have to subscribe to the game to get access to this latest content update, and it just follows the story further. I mean, if it's one thing Star Wars The Old Republic does right, it's a strong emphasis on story. It will really distinguish the game from other titles, and uh, this chapter will probably be no different. And to encourage people to stay subscribed to the game before this comes out, anyone that's subscribed to the game before March 1st will gain access to this chapter two days early. I said this before, even though Star Wars The Old Republic is free to play right now, much of the stuff you kind of have to pay to access, including all of these content updates. Next up, a bit of news from Davillion, and the news is that Update 1.3 launched this week, and it introduces the new Tempest class, but unfortunately it costs $9.99 to play the new Tempest class. Trying to sell actual classes for money is definitely not a, a path you want to go. I feel like you're going to piss off a lot of players, especially free-to-play users. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. I could see them selling races and stuff and some MMORPGs, because races aren't that big of a deal in these games, but trying to sell a class for money, it just, it just seems really unfair, but they're selling it for 9 dollars 
I mean, everything else in the update is free as you'd expect, but for some reason they're, they're charging money for the class. And it, it's gonna piss off a lot of players. Plus, if you wanna lure other players back to the game, it's not gonna work when one of the classes you have to pay for again. But also including the update are level 54 gear sets as well as a new raid. But come on, Tryon, you, you've been getting shit on by everybody for the last few weeks, doing a lot more pay to win stuff and making stuff more locked for free to play users in all your games, and it's it's unfortunate. But we'll see how players react. Well, on to some more positive news. A little a little bit over a week after the Rising Waters update went live for Blade and Soul, the game's already gearing up for its next content update titled Unchained. The Unchained update will add the new Warlock class to the game, as well as unlock the final floor of Mushin's Tower, which is floor 8. Along with the launch of the update, Antisoft is giving, is giving everybody a free character slot to their account. So now you have 8 character slots so you can make this character without having to delete one if you were already full. Also included with this update is a new dynamic dungeon which will change every single time you access it. So it'll, 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 it'll keep it more fresh every time which is, which is nice. And the Unchained update is set to release on March 2nd. Up next, some more very odd news from Tryon World, this time regarding Archage. The news is that allowing players to add stats to their costumes, which is uh, going to piss off a lot of players because the whole purpose of costumes is to have a whole bunch of costumes, right? And now, if, when you, if you can add stats to a costume, you're going to put all your, all your, you're going to spend a lot of money putting stats into your best costume, and you won't be able to switch them around as easily as you could before because you can't really switch them out all the time if it's only practical to wear one costume. It just, I don't know what Tryon's doing, but it's, it's going to piss a lot of people off. And the weird part about the system too is that you actually have to re-add the stats to your costume every, every about every 30 days, otherwise they start wearing off. You gotta use uh, Synthium Soap, otherwise the stats wear off. So it's another money sink in the game. It's a very odd decision, but we'll see how players react. From what I've read, it's already a very negative response. Uh, Tryon seems to be making some very questionable decisions in all of their games lately. I mean, obviously I don't blame them entirely because they, they are a business, they gotta make money, but it just seems very odd the way they're going. On some more positive uh, Tryon World news, they did launch the sneak peek beta for Alpha Reactor last week, and it's running from uh, February 18th to the 24th. She has already made a video for it, and I've already played a couple of rounds, and it is actually a unique, unique experience. Mixes like Dota-esque uh, mechanics, not really mechanics, Dota-esque gameplay with XCOM gameplay. So you have the, you don't have the, the crazy mechanics required for MOBAs, and it's actually more of a strategic game, more tactical game, and it's actually quite fun, so we'll see where they go with that. Hopefully they don't charge money for characters, because that would kind of suck. But we'll see. The next and last bit of news this week, guys, comes from uh, COG Games' Hero Wars. And they revealed a new trailer for the game, and actually the first Western trailer for the game. And it's, it's unfortunately just a tutorial video, but you can still see some actual gameplay. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's an isometric MMO. It's an action MMO from an isometric angle. And it, it looks interesting, but there's no official release date just yet for it. But we'll learn more once it actually comes out. And as you can already see here by my voice, it's already dying because I have a sore throat. So I'm going to call, call this video right now. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the podcast. Later, guys.